In 1942, a prisoner of war camp opened in the small rural community of Weingarten, Missouri, just outside the town of St. Genevieve. It was to house Italian prisoners who arrived the next year in May. At the camp, the POWs were treated with remarkable dignity and kindness. In fact, many of the American GIs chose to eat in the Italian mess hall because they had better food. But above all, the POWs were grateful to be away from the war. You know, Weingarten was, a, was and is just an itty bitty place. There were four big prisoner of war camps in Missouri. Weingarten was one and there were three others. And those three others were all located on existing military bases. When I got to uh, uh, Camp, Camp Weingarten, <coughs> they were bringing the prisoners in, uh, I was uh, a buck private. <laughs> But when they found out that I had some musical talent and could be of, of some help, they uh, promoted to what they call PFC, number one stripe. See? And it stayed that way till we were sent back to Fort Custer for overseas amphibious training. And nobody knew, knew it then, but I know it now. We were designated to go to uh, England, and then to Normandy Beachhead. One day a particular guard might accompany prisoners of war out to work in the field somewhere. Another day he might be responsible for being up in the guard tower, uh, just kind of keeping an eye over the big recreation area where they'd play soccer, or maybe he'd be out walking the dog around or patrolling on horseback. So, uh, and, they, and the guards themselves you know, continued their own military training where they would go out um, to the firing range ever so often and, and just practice their marksmanship and you know practice uh, the kinds of maneuvers that a military police company would do. Pull out a cigarette and give it to the one that you thought was a boss and and he, he'd get the guys to working and if I wanted to lay down in the haystack there with my 30 caliber rifle and I had no ammunition even then I could do it. Yeah, it, was, it would be pretty boring to have that job guarding prisoners. And so when they left Camp Weingarten, they got to do things that were a little more interesting or, you know, lively in terms of involvement with the war effort. Um, the civilians within the camps, you know, were employed in specific jobs. Um, you know, you would have a job as a barber or, um, you know, as a veterinarian or as a laborer of some sort. Uh, you know, there were was, there was suppliers that came through the camp. Uh, I talked with one guy who, <laughs> as a kid, rode along with um, the man whose job it was to deliver cases of soda to the prisoners of war. He talks about being 12 and, you know, carrying the crates of soda that were full and bringing out the crates of bottles that were empty. And um, so just the normal types of supply things that would take place with that. I don't know if it's a barber shop, but, you know, just normal kind of everyday jobs like that. And so for them, it was more like a nine to five thing worked there for uh, maybe two months and I didn't like it. I just thought being a secretary would be the most wonderful thing, but I didn't like it. So I got a job at Quartermasters. I was in charge of every item that came on the post except guns, ammunition, and clothes. Those prisoners had pictures of Adolf Hitler uh, and uh, Mussolini and all of them, uh, picture of girls and stuff like that in, in their uh, uh, in their barracks and mostly in their mess halls. See, they cooked their own meals, their own clothes. They, a lot of times, they practically made their own shoes from what was left over shoes from our boys. You know, most of the Italian soldiers came from North Africa. Um, in early on in the war, when um, the United States and our Allies had big success in North Africa. That's where we captured the bulk of them. And a number of them had been captured even before the United States entered the war. That they had been captured and held in Great Britain. And um, Great Britain was completely swamped with prisoners of war, more than they could handle comfortably. And so as soon as the United States came in the war, we agreed to take large numbers of these prisoners of war. So um, a number of the Italians came to us from North Africa, largely where they were captured in Tunisia and places like that, but through Great Britain. The theater was a fabulous building, made, made nice and good. That's where we had our dances and stuff like that. The only time I interacted with, with them was when I had them in, in my band, 
as a musical director. Uh, they couldn't speak English, of course. I could learn a, a few words in Italian, you know, and uh, uh, it, it was just a matter of bringing him over for practice sessions on certain mornings when I didn't have bugler classes and take him back to the compound in the evening. Work in the afternoon and then come back in the evening for their evening meal and then um, after that they would have a period of free time for mm -hmm recreation, you know, sports, volleyball, soccer, whatever, or uh, the other things that they chose to fill their free time with. Um, there was a library accessible to them, like a, a craft studio where they could paint or uh, make sculptures, just uh, free time sorts of things. Write letters, read letters, or just play cards, whatever. And then uh, lights out until the next morning when they begin the routine again. Do you remember taking me out there to the movie? You and Connie? took me out there to a movie, and the movie was really scary. And I remember Connie saying, scoot down in the street, I see. And she showed me down because apparently this big spider was doing something on the screen. As the war progressed, so did the camp. It had gained almost 100 acres from its original 850. The Italian POWs held there became worried they would have to go home. When June 6th was picked for D-Day, many of the MP were sent for amphibious training so that they could land on Normandy Beach with the Rangers. As more and more POWs came to the camp, more and more GIs were sent to fight in Europe. When the war was over and the POWs were released, most went back to Italy, but some later came back to live in Missouri and other parts of the United States. Mm -hmm.